In this little aquarium is an adorable little pea puffer fish. The smallest species of puffer fish in the world getting its name from being barely the size of a green pea. And here is the rest of his family. I want to start them in a smaller tank and then upgrade as they grow out of it. So I snap on a background and a light. Wait a minute. There we go. This sand will house beneficial bacteria to keep the water healthy. These little sponge filters will, well, you guessed it, filter the water and add oxygen to the tank. Now this Rudy stump, I actually got as a birthday present. I think it'll be a perfect centerpiece and be a good place for them to hide and have shelter. I can't help but feel we're missing something though. Hmm, wait, what was that? Ah yes, live plants. Pea puffers have huge appetites and these plants will help absorb the nutrients that builds up from all the food. Let's see if we can find any more. Aha, there it is, marsh grass. This will add some nice variety to our little ecosystem. Now pea puffers are tropical, so we're gonna add this little heater to keep them nice and toasty. The last step is adding nice dechlorinated water to the tank. I put the lid there so the sand doesn't stir up, but this is taking forever, so I'm just going to snap to the finished product. There it is in all its beauty. We add the lid and now we are ready to add some creatures. All right guys, hear me out, okay? Pea puffers are not the only tank inhabitants that I got. I think it's very healthy for them to live with other creatures, so I got quite a few other little animals to live with them. First up we have three snails. Yoink, kerplunk. These guys really love eating algae and other debris, which should help to keep the sand and the glass clean. Even though they're pretty slow moving creatures, they're also quite majestic and really peaceful to watch in the aquarium. Now the next creatures are not so slow moving. Next up, these guys are probably the craziest of the creatures I'm gonna put in there. These are fish called loaches. They look a lot like eels, but you can tell the difference when you get a close-up shot. They'll eat up the food that's left over on the ground because pea puffers rarely eat things that don't move. Last but not least, we have a few colorful guppies and two albino quarry catfish. At first, they seem a little wary of their surroundings and pretty nervous, but pretty soon it becomes obvious they're loving their new home. Check out the vibrant colors on these fish. That color of blue is really close to my favorite color. I think these two quarry catfish are competing for the camera attention. All right, everyone. The moment we've all been waiting for, let's get these little guys into their new home. As soon as I dump them in, they start to inspect and explore their new home. And it's a huge upgrade from their little bear tank that I found them in at the pet store. Pea puffers are one of the few species of puffer fish that do really well living in large families. Unlike most puffer fish, they're also completely freshwater and in the wild they live in lakes, streams and rivers in southern India. Their eyes are completely independent of each other, kind of like chameleons. Puffer fish are one of my favorite species of fish just because how adorable they are and how their personality seems to be more intelligent than most fish, almost like a little puppy dog. I can tell they're a little bit nervous about their new surroundings, but I'm pretty sure that pretty soon this will be a safe home for them. They seem to be getting along pretty well with the other tank mates, although I did notice some of the guppies asserting dominance and just trying to prove that they were here first. I'm not too worried though because puffer fish are really good at defending themselves and I think these guppies will be perfect tank mates for them. Fairly quickly, I noticed the puffer fish started to get hungry. They started to nibble on everything around them and this guy tries to eat a twig.
I also started to notice they were paying special attention to the snails. In the wild, pea puffers love eating snails, but usually smaller than these ones. This little pea puffer is not giving this snail a kiss. He's actually trying to take a bite out of him. Here's a good rule of thumb. If your little pea puffers start to chase your huge snail up the glass, it's time to feed the puffers. In the wild, they're notorious for only eating things that move like insects and worms and snails, but the first thing I wanted to try feeding them are thawed out frozen bloodworms because they're really nutritious and it'd be nice if they didn't just eat things that were alive. When I came into the room with the food, they noticed immediately and came to the glass with these adorable puppy eyes, seemingly begging for some food. So here you go guys, here are thawed out frozen bloodworms. I hope you're not disappointed. At first I was really excited because it looked like they were thoroughly enjoying the worms. But to my dismay, within a couple minutes, they lost interest as the worms stopped moving and just settled on the bottom of the tank. And I could tell they were still really hungry, but they wouldn't eat the worms. The other tank inhabitants, however, absolutely loved them and quite literally stuffed their faces. But obviously the puffers need something that's moving, so first up we have live brine shrimp. When I poured them into the tank, it started an absolute feeding frenzy. And the puffer fish started to slurp them down like they were some giant noodles. It's so satisfying to watch them thoroughly enjoy their meal. I'm gonna rate this guy's cuteness level out of 10. Oh my goodness. That is adorable. That is a solid 8.4 out of 10. All right, let's rate this little guy. Oh man, that's so adorable. I don't know if he's as cute as the other one though. Oh, he sees another brine shrimp. Oh, he got stuck on the grass. Oh, is he gonna get it? Oh man, this is cuteness level overload. And he slurps it down. That has to be an 8.6. All of these guys are so adorable. This one here seemed to be a little bit overwhelmed with the number of brine shrimp. But once he zeroed in on one, he locked in and then gobbled it up. Some of the puffer fish were having a bit of a harder time than others. This poor guy couldn't get away from the bubbles or the crazy loach. This little guy's aim wasn't the best at first, but he persevered and in the end got a delicious meal out of it. The more they slurped down the brine shrimp, the bigger their bellies got and pretty soon they started to lose interest in the hunt. This one's belly is so big, if I didn't know any better, I would think it was pregnant. Now you guys are probably wondering, how do I keep the water clean with all that leftover brine shrimp? At first, I use something called a gravel vacuum that sucks up the debris and adds fresh, clean water back. But over the next couple weeks, I had to feed them so much, two to three times a day, so I yoinked out the sponge filters and put a nice canister filter in. I also glued some moss on the log. That will help with exporting nutrients. Now guys, don't be surprised with how the tank looks two weeks later. It looks hideous because algae has grown everywhere. Now that's not actually a bad thing necessarily because algae helps also to absorb nutrients and make the water cleaner, but I have a plan because I don't want all this algae floating around the whole tank. The three snails simply could not keep up with all the algae and although they're probably pretty happy with unlimited food constantly, 
we need to introduce some other creatures. Meet the voracious algae-eating plecos. These guys will make quick work of the algae. They have these special mouths designed to scrape algae off of every single surface in the entire tank. See if you can notice throughout the rest of the video how clean they make the tank. Speaking of noticing things, the pea puffer fish have grown quite a bit in just two weeks and their appetite is bigger than ever before. It's also important to have a lot of variety in their diet, so I got them some live Daphnia. These are little crustaceans that live in freshwater and I got them live black worms. These things are so cool, but also pretty creepy. And of course, last but not least, we're gonna feed them these huge energetic mosquito larva. I think these are gonna be the biggest challenge, but I'm pretty sure the pea puffers are up for it. At the end of this video, I'm gonna see what they do with a little earthworm, but the worm is actually mostly for other creatures that I recently added to the tank. They're really neat. See if you can guess what they are. I also put in a bunch of little snails. These are the size that they would eat in the wild. My hope is that these snails will actually live and multiply in the tank so that when the puffer fish get hungry, they can instantly have a little snack to hunt out. One of my goals with this little ecosystem is that the food would be more sustainable and actually live in the tank with them. So the Daphnia, the black worms, and the mosquito larvae are all going to live in the tank. One of the problems with the brine shrimp is they need salt water and so they would die instantly and pollute the water. So this will be much better. I think we're ready to eat some Daphnia. In they go. I could tell instantly that this is one of their new favorite foods. Check out how this one just sucks it up like a big piece of jello. These Daphnia are also a really good challenge for them because they have such sporadic movement, the puffer fish really have to work for their meal. They filled up really fast though, and once they were full, they seemed to think it was not worth the chase. But the puffer fish have such high metabolisms, I know they're gonna be starving in no time and ready for the black worms. And sure enough, just a few hours later, they were hungry and begging for more food. As soon as the black worms hit the ground, the puffers attack it like it's a huge mountain of spaghetti. These worms do have a couple lines of defenses though. The first one being tightly packed together, holding on to each other. So the puffer's job is to separate them from the pack and then dive in for the slurp. Their most effective line of defense, however, is their ability to quickly dig into the gravel and seemingly disappear. If you look close enough, you'll notice the pile is getting smaller and smaller, and it's not because the puffer fish are eating them all, it's because they are all digging into the gravel. That's actually what I want to happen though, because I don't want the puffer fish eating all the worms in one sitting. The black worms will actually live underneath the gravel and multiply, that way when they stick their little heads up, the puffer fish can pick them off and have a nice little snack. I think the puffer fish are cool with it, but if I was them, I might be a little creeped out that underneath my floor lived all these creepy worms. I'm really impressed with how amazing the pea puffer's eyes are. They can see little movements in the gravel and then dive in and pull out a worm seemingly out of nowhere. Personally, I think eating worms is a little bit gross, but just watching them slurp these things up honestly makes me want a bowl of noodles or something. Right here, it looks like a lady in the tramp moment where they're sharing a noodle. How romantic. Check out the focus and concentration on this little guy's face and it pays off. The next morning, I dug in the spot where the worms disappeared, and sure enough, here comes some out. A nice little morning snack for the puffer fish. The next meal is the grand finale, mosquito larva, and I'm pretty sure the puffers are ready for it. As soon as the larva hit the water, it was hard to keep track of all the mayhem because the puffers went absolutely ballistic, devouring the mosquitoes. This guy is chasing down a mosquito larva pupa. 
That's the stage right before they turn into an adult flying mosquito. And he snags it. This little puffer is trying to eat a mosquito larva nearly the same length of his whole body, but he's successful to wrestle it to the ground and eat it up. When it comes to food, pea puffer fish are not really known for how well they are at sharing. This mosquito larva pupa is so fast it takes the whole gang to try to hunt it down, but it has a little trick up its sleeve. It freezes in mid-water and then bolts in a random direction. Here it actually plays dead and these two pea puffer fish lose interest. But there's one puffer fish here that is too smart for the mosquito larva. Got him. And now for our bonus worm drop featuring our last minute tank inhabitants, these adorable orange dwarf crayfish. I mean, look how cute this guy is cleaning himself. Whoa, and he has some attitude. Now what you see hiding behind this log are not the fins of a fish. They're actually the feet of an African clawed frog. This guy lurks in the shadows, keeping a close eye on everything going on in the tank. They especially love worms and this guy is hungry. The pufferfish are definitely very curious about the worm, but they don't really know what to do with it. However, this crayfish jumping out of seemingly nowhere knows exactly what to do. He tackles it to the ground and pulls his dinner into the foliage. The second worm I dropped in, I could tell the frog wanted to gobble up, but first he was cautious, making sure it wasn't dangerous. Then, when he was certain, he tries to swallow the whole thing. That's the most energy I've seen him ever have. But after letting him wrestle with it for a while, I realized I gave him way more than he could chew, so I decided to give him a small piece of the worm, which he gobbled up and absolutely loved. Now that is what a happy frog looks like. By the way, the algae-eating plecos have done such a good job of cleaning the tank, they started to fight over the algae, so I think I'm probably gonna have to put them in a different tank. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. This has to be one of my favorite projects thus far. I hope you will join me for the next one.